Sore throat is mean, and I'm gonna tell God that's that's he's mean one. Well, what what what's Why? Si what symptom of a sickness isn't mean? Sn a, a stuffy nose. I can do him. It's, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But I no. the the sore throat is the I hate him more than life because I have to swallow. <laughs> At some point, I have it, to. It impacts talking and eating. Yes, <laughs> but swallowing is so important, and so you just sit there and you hold it until your mouth is so full of saliva, and then you have to you have <laughs> that, to swallow. I hate it. Nope, that that disgusts me. We'll be right back. Good, Good morning. morning. Welcome, Welcome to, to wake, wake up. up, where we wake up. Uh, Pastor Scott, Pastor Jason, and Pastor Scott was just saying, yeah, I woke up with a sore throat last night. Be feeling better today? I am. I'm feeling good. Yeah. No, I had. I would say in the top. Probably three sore throats of my life. Okay, on a uh, on a and ten star scale, how many how many stars was it? He, he was like eighty. He was he was so. And I let me tell you this, God, if you're listening to me, the sore throat makes no sense. There's no reason. It's not like my throat feels anything until <laughs> right. I, I don't feel anything ever in my throat until it's, it becomes sore. Yeah. And then I have to swallow. And Jason will tell you, him and I both, our mouths produce. More saliva than most. Yeah. My dentist, even my dentist, is like, oh my god, like he's got to get like a couple suctions in there. <laughs> it's so much saliva. So I try not to swallow, but then all of a sudden I start gurgling, <laughs> and then I have to swallow it, and it hurts. <laughs> I'm thoroughly disgusted. <laughs> People are trying to eat their breakfast and drink their coffee. Right now. Can you just lay off? Fun. And I think it's because a mom prayed for certain things in my life. And one she of the prayed ones, that you would have more spit than most? No, I think that she didn't want me to smoke. So I can't, like, you know, I had buddies that would, hey, oh, let's have a cigar. So I put a cigar in my mouth, but my mouth produces so much saliva that it would actually get soggy and fall off. <laughs> I can't smoke a cigar. It would put the fire out? I can't smoke a cigar. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. You can still get <laughs> tattoos, though, if you want. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where are we at? <laughs> Uh, today we are talking um, on your message this weekend, and we're still in This Is Us. Who are we as Christians? Yeah. Who are we? We're, we live different than the world different. Yeah. We experience things different than the world experiences things. We live at a higher level, and because mm -hmm. we live at a higher level, we experience more out of this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And what makes it the way that God wants it to be is the world looks at us as Christians, as what's supposed to be, and go, wait, what do they have that I don't have? Because I want what they have. Mm -hmm. This is who we are. Mm -hmm. And so we're in Cain and Abel today, aren't we? Yeah. And, and we're going to be in Genesis chapter 4, and we're just kind of looking at this uh, story. Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the, the Bible says, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. And we know this story kind of is Cain. Yeah. Cain is in there, and it says, but on Cain and his offering... Uh, he did not look with favor, so Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Right. And if you read in Hebrews, you find out that Abel gave in faith. Right? Right. He gave out of that position of, of believing God, trusting God. Like, I'm trusting you with my stuff. Right. And we, we give, not only do we give better, right? It says fat portions in his firstborn. We give better when we've really, truly learned to trust God with our finances or with our future. When God is our source. Yeah. When because, he's our source, then you're you, like, oh, I have no trouble giving. You're like, well, yeah, I'm not going to be able to outgive God, so right. I'm going to give I'm But if give I'm a self-made man, then giving becomes very hard. Yeah. Because it doesn't make any mathematical sense. Math goes, wait a second, if I have 10 and I give one away, 9, 9 is less than 10. But Abel realized that 9 is more than 10. Yeah. That because when I give it to God... Whatever you put in God's hands, but it's, it's, a farm it's going to get bigger. It's a farm principle. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to take my seed that I have and put it in the ground makes no sense. Right. But when I put it in the ground and put it in God's creation's hands, then the one becomes many. Yeah. One becomes more. It grows. So doesn't it? And it says, so it says that, that the Lord had looked with favor on Abel and his offering. And, and so without faith, it is impossible to please God. God. So really it was that, you know, because the widow gave just a mite. It was two pennies. Yeah, it wasn't right? much. So it wasn't about the amount, was it? No. Uh, she, she barely gave anything. And Jesus stopped heaven and earth to point out this fact and logged it into the eternal book. word of God, inscribed on the, the yeah. Lamb's book of life. He he basically, uh, you know, highlighted this widow and what she did. I imagine that there was some repercussions afterwards. Like if he highlighted her that big, I imagine that she wasn't going to be poor much longer. Right. right. Jesus just spoke into her life. But he called his disciples over. You got to see what this woman gave. And, and what she's just done for the kingdom right. of God. She gave more than all the people who gave a lot. So it really wasn't about the fat portions, the two pennies, or this sort of thing. It was about the heart of the giver, right? Right. And so 
but but what we want to talk about today is is that that Cain was all upset about it, wasn't he? Right. And here's here's what we want to say. This is who we are as Christians. Yeah. We are as Christians. We celebrate the victories. Of others. That's right. Because when I celebrate your victory and I get excited because, well, you know, she got the promotion and, and she's a horrible worker and she's always blah, 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 blah. And we get ourselves all worked up. And when I get myself worked up, I lose hope. But when I celebrate somebody's victory, I'm like, I praise God she got blessed. That is amazing. Because I know that if she got blessed, I'm going to get blessed. That's right. And do you see in that wording that it built my hope up? Well, the, the Bible, and this was my point, one of the points I made this last weekend, is, is that the Bible is full of inspiring stories of great things that happen to ordinary people. Right. That m- miracles, impossible things happen to people that maybe didn't deserve it. Uh, that that these, uh, these stories, you look at this story with Abel, that uh, we look at the story of, of, of Noah or Abraham or Moses. What about these, the harlot at Jericho? The harlot. She was, she was not worthy. Yeah. She wasn't worthy of anything. No, Rahab was the, the prostitute. She ran the whorehouse in Jericho. So of the Jericho... If it happened to her... <laughs> of the Jericho the sinners, people, she she's was the, the worst. worst. <laughs> but and she's but the, one the that Bible got says she believed God. Right. Right? Hebrews talks about Rahab. That right. She had faith. So so in her faith, right, she opted out of, of right. that scenario. And she, we see her being rescued. So, But what we want to talk about, though, is, is that these stories are there to in, to do what? To inspire faith and hope in us, right? We go, oh, well, look at that story. Look at this story. So also in your own world, when you see great things happen to the people around you, it's gonna inspire that you. story is there. It's possible that there's a, there's a, a big highlight that God's trying to put right. that story in your life and right in your position, right in your plain view to say, look what I can do. Right. Because I want you to see what I can do for you. Right. If I did it for them... I'll do it for I'll you. I'll do it for you. I'm no respecter of persons. And, and if, if Cain had just realized, okay, if God did it for, for Abel, Abel, he can do, do it, it for me. me. It would have been a whole different scenario. Yeah. He would, instead of being angry and frustrated and downcast and depressed and felt like nothing ever goes my way. Yeah. See, the enemy always takes something good and makes it good for nothing. Yeah, that's his favorite that's thing what he to does. do. He yeah. takes something good. So God puts a story in your world. I love how you said that example. He puts a story in your world and somebody got something. They got a, a, a new car. You're like, well, why do they get a new car? How come I don't get a new car? So what was meant to bring you hope actually discouraged you. Discouraged you. But it was meant. God's like, I meant it for I, good. I meant it to, to, to stir you up and say, if I can do it for them. I can do it for you. I can do it for you. I can you. bring something great into your world. You, you I, love the, the show Survivor. I love, you love Survivor. Oh, I love it too, but I'm so, I'm not like, like, I'm addicted to Survivor. <laughs> no, I am. So, I, so, and he's got his immunity necklace on today, so you can't vote him, <laughs> you can't, can't vote, vote him off, off the island. No, I'm off, unless he's fake. Although if anybody's in, you know, up for being voted off the island, it might be me. Why would you be voted well, because of how much I've missed, and I think Pastor Dean might be better. Oh, you haven't helped him around the campfire. You haven't been. You're that guy. <laughs> I watched Pastor Dean. I was like, yeah, she's better. Pastor Holly, I was like, yeah, she's better. <laughs> Nobody's Lake was better I'm like, than yeah, you. they're better. No, you're better. You're so good. <laughs> but but if you watch Survivor, you know that that uh, towards the end after the merge, when or anytime, oh, when somebody about... goes to the reward. And oh. the other team doesn't see you. Do, so those of you who don't know the show, I don't have much time to talk about this. Um, they do a competition, and whoever wins gets a reward, and the other people get left behind. And you're talking about people that have no food, no, food, no blankets, no warmth, sometimes no water. And then they take the other group and they give them like ice cream, coffee, right. like a hamburger, uh, uh-huh. and a massage. And they take them on a helicopter ride to look at waterfalls. Okay. So- <laughs> So these people come back, and then you you get to watch the the interaction. interaction. You, you even get to see the behind the scenes. Oh my gosh! So they're so, like, oh my gosh, it was so great. The burger melted in my mouth, oh, and the all you're the getting voted off. As soon as you said that, I go, you're going home. And the, the team that didn't get the group of people that didn't get to go, they they're were angry. They'll bite you in the back. Oh my gosh, they're so. I told angry. Holly because they rubbed my face. My dream is to be on Survivor. I want to be on there. Yeah. But I already have my plan. You never win. No. You never win it. No. Because no you win no reward. Never win that reward. No. I know that you want... It's not worth a million dollars. You let somebody else win it. Yeah. Because then they're going to get voted off. You never want to win it. Because the person who wins because gets hated. And when you win it, you also get to pick two or three other people to go with you on the reward, which yeah. even causes more... Yeah. 
Jealousy. Well, why'd they pick him and not me? Yeah, why me? I thought we were an alliance. I thought we were friends. But but that's the world. Yeah, that's, that's not, not how us. we do it. Because this is us. We celebrate other people's wins. When we see someone else going off to Fiji or we see somebody else getting the blessing of the Lord, when you hear about somebody getting healed of cancer, but you have cancer, right. that's an opportunity for that testimony to stir up your hope, right? So not be good. discouraged, why not me? But instead to stir me up and say, if God did it for them, he can do it for me. I like what you, that gave me an idea. Why not me? Instead you say, oh, me I'm is next. Going, I'm next. I'm it's next. It's a whole different I'm thing. that bridesmaid that caught the bouquet. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for the day, Lord. That if, they, if you've done it for other people in our world, we know you'll do it for us, Lord. And we go forth celebrating all the victories of everyone around us. Everyone that you put in our world, as they get a victory in their life, we are the people who celebrate it because that is who we are in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy this clip. Last night, a woman came to me, just last night after, after teaching this message, and she said, can I tell you a story? I was like, yeah, absolutely. I love your story. And I asked her, I always ask people, can I share this story with the, the church? She said, absolutely. So she was driving in her car on the way to the babysitter and on the way to work, dropping the kids off for daycare. And her car started just rumbling terribly, and it was almost shutting off, and the idle kept changing at the stoplight, and the check engine light came on, and she thought, oh no, I can't afford this. I gotta go to work today. I can't afford to have car trouble right now. I'm not dealing with this right now. And she said, Lord, can you just get me to the daycare? So her car made it all the way to the daycare, dropped the kids off, and then she said, Lord, can you just get me to work today? So she drove the car all the way to work, and she got there. But then on the way to work, she remembered that the, I, taught, I taught, talked about a story where my car check engine light came on. And she, she, this is her own words. She said, and when you said you prayed over your car, I thought, well, that's odd. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, pastor, you prayed over your car and the check engine light went off. But she, she said to herself, I remember that story. And she said, I thought to myself, this is before she, this is before she heard the sermon. She thought to herself the week before, if God did it for him, he could do it for me. So she prayed over her car as she stopped in the parking lot at work. She said, I, I, I just felt led to turn the car off. And then I thought, I'll turn it back on. She turned it back on and the check engine light was off and the car has been running smooth ever since. Come on. But if God did it for her, he can do it for you. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Share it. Don't Share. forget to subscribe. Go to YouTube.com if you're listening on the radio. Go to YouTube.com and click the subscription. Uh, just search Daily Bible Study. So it will come up number one. Click, click subscribe. That way you can watch it anytime you want. Visit wakeuptv.tv. And don't forget about Girls Night Out this Thursday night. Ladies out there, it's going to be 80s night. My wife's got an incredible teaching on identity. Great relationships, food trucks, fun. Yeah. Come on out for and it. And the men are all going to Andy's at 730. 7.30. And don't forget to be in church this weekend because oh, God's Andy's? house. I didn't know there was more than one Andy's. I only know one Andy's in this world. Get out. Just it's... get off the show. <laughs> I lost it. Right I'm there. sorry. He's got to go. I got to go. I don't want to go. Why? So that, no, I'm just kidding. I love, still love Andy so much. It's on McKellops and uh, between uh, uh, Gilbert and, and Stapley. Stapley. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll see you there.